She got the coke head on, so I'm gonna see. Oh, that's amazing. Louisiana. Murder on the beat. Come on. Dude, they can't even get Sorry for y'all to cut up to, you know? What? What is that? Really? Wow. Who is that? I don't know. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. Been waiting to say that. Welcome into another episode of Trust the Process Live, brought to you by My New Philly. I am James Hyden with my guys here as always, Mr. Five Digits, Max Coolish. How's it going, everybody? And the bluest of the birds, James Jackson. Don't forget. Fellas, how we doing? I'm great. Anti-Cowboys. Anti-Cowboys. My team got a my team got a win yesterday. Yeah, too. We'll take that. I don't, we'll I don't take get that. victory Mondays, you guys baby. You didn't cover, so uh, <laughs> yeah, just, whatever. No, I'll we'll leave that out Mondays. of it. <laughs> so with like, all that, just let me enjoy it. I, with, I, I couldn't enjoy it, so you can't. <laughs> with all that talk of a wins, our first one before we get into our main event is: Can you win a bye week by default? Yes. Yeah. yeah yes, that's, absolutely, that's, you can. I would say that outside of the Atlanta Falcons yesterday, the Eagles might be the biggest winners of the weekend. True. Okay. Like, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, the, the Cowboys, I mean, that was, a, that was a pretty good game that in was general. A good game. But it's kind of surprising to me how the Cowboys still managed to put up, you know, 20 plus points with their running game being so ineffective. Like, right. Dak played pretty out of his mind last Mari night. Mari like, Cooper. You know, I'm, I'm not. Mari I mean, Cooper also played out of his mind. Obviously, I'm not going to give the guy credit if he doesn't deserve it. But, I mean, Dak played, played out of his mind. Mari Cooper, like, that game and, like, obviously the game against the Eagles last year. But, he has probably, it feels like he has more games than most players that get traded for like midseason. In it's been a you know, a full season, he's probably played his full 16 18 at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels like he's had way more impact for the Cowboys than, than most people have. Right. Than most players, I mean, it's not surprising that the Cowboys offense goes as Zeke goes. I don't necessarily know if that's a bad thing either. He's one of the best mm-hmm, running yeah. backs in the league. Um, but it's, it's pretty clear if Zeke's not on his best game, the Cowboys are really going to fall behind and yeah. it's going to be tough for them to win. I might argue that the Oakland Raiders were one of the best winners of the weekend, big, too, with big, them winning and the, the Chiefs falling back. They're only half game back yeah. now. Um, but look, it's, the it's, Chiefs game was insane. That was yeah. insane. But to answer your original question, if you don't lose and the team you're chasing in the standing lose That's and lovely. that gap closes, then. That's a W. Look, I, I, look, I, Amari I, Cooper I was picking apart. Even um, records, we 16 at Philadelphia. Yeah. If that's what your season comes down to, you live with that. that. Amari Cooper was picking apart a guy who came off an ACL tear, so. Take it for what it is, but it's fraud. Uh, um, (laughs) Our main event tonight is going to take us around the beautiful city that we call home, and we're going to make a stop down at the sports complex for every one of our professional sports teams. So let's do it. The first one, probably the most important. We're going to go to a rematch of Super Bowl 52. My favorite number. What a Super Bowl that was. Between the New England Patriots. And our Philadelphia Eagles. So, his guys, his, we, yeah, I'm yeah, actually, now, we're on the show. Philadelphia we're on the show. I know it's just my his Philadelphia Philadelphia Eagles. It is, it is just his. But what I need from you guys is to tell me what needs to go right, what could go wrong, mm. and what do you think is going to go? <laughs> I, I mean, okay, I'll start with what needs to go right. Because okay, if, please, please. <laughs> if we talk what could go wrong, we might be here yes. for a while. For a little bit. Yeah, roll your sleeves up. Yeah, right look, 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 get Take comfortable. Take these jackets yeah. off. Get comfortable. What needs to go right, I think first and foremost, the Eagles need to win time of possession. There's a whole lot of ways they can do that. I really don't care how they do that. They They just need to have the ball, and Carson Wentz needs to have the ball way more than Tom Brady has the ball if they want any chance of winning the game. I think one way they can do that is really stay committed to the run and have long, sustaining drives with that end and touchdown. So the thing we've been telling them to do all season. All season. But they, need, but they need to do it to a T. They don't need to just do it sometimes this game. It right. needs to be all game. First, second, third, and fourth quarter. You need to have these long drives that keeps Tom Brady off the field for seven, eight plus Because he needs time. At a time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you need – he needs – time over there um and also what they need to do is when tom brady does come on the field you can't get intimidated by the sure presence of him of what he could do to your defensive secondary you need to stay committed to blitzing him and making him uncomfortable we watched what the baltimore ravens were able to do something he's not used to having to do is deal with pressure and be on his back a lot and even if he gets the ball out quickly that's fine you're gonna have to live with that if you're the Mm -hmm. eagles and rely on players in your secondary to come up and make plays in space that you're going to have to live with the lesser of two evils. If you sit back in a zone and try to just, you know, cover all strings back there, Tom Brady goes bio class on your defense and just dissects, dissects you. So time of possession and getting to Tom Brady quickly, which I get 
is a whole <laughs> lot easier said than done. I'm making it seem like it's very easy. Yeah, why does it, everybody? It, yeah. right, it's not. There's a reason why there's eight and one. But if you want to win a football game, that's what you have to do. I totally. I don't think we could agree more on the time of possession thing. It's such a basic football principle. Yeah. It almost gets forgotten sometimes. Like go back a couple weeks ago, the Colts and the Chiefs game that Sunday night game. The Colts had the ball for what felt like the whole game. It's yeah. just like you can't score if, you don't if have you're the not ball. on the field. Exactly. So I think you're 100 percent correct. And both with the running and being able to finish off drives. Yeah, going on a six and a half, seven minute drive is nice. But guess what? Putting up three points against the Patriots, yeah. minor win, but still it? pretty major loss in terms of the grand scheme of the game. So I'd 100% agree. I think a big key, Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders probably need to combine for like 175 or more scrimmage yards, yeah, I would say. Probably. I think you probably have to use them, especially Sanders in the passing game in general. Those wheel routes. But going to the defense, I think the defense is really the key side of this matchup. And you're 100% right. The Patriots offense has been running the same way since almost 20 years at this point. Since Tom Brady got exactly. in there. Yeah. It is proven, it is tried, it is tested, and it works against everybody. It works against everybody. So at this point, you can't worry about, oh, how do we stop the, the two-yard completions to Edelman turning into 18-yard gains? It's how do we tackle in space effectively, which is always a big key. That's but how you stop the two-yard from going to 18-yard gains. Exactly, tackle. exactly. And then the other major, major thing is when it comes, you know, you have to be able to finish off drives with touchdowns, but being able to hold the Patriots to field goals is probably going to be the biggest key in this game mm. in general. Because I think we probably agree that, you know, the Eagles, we've been, you know, we talked about, the Romans kind of conditioned as Eagles fans to, to just be like, okay, whatever, 70 yards passing on this drive, they're inside the 30, now, now we get to play defense, right? And I think we need to, you know, conjure up some of that 2017, 20, even last year to an extent, yeah. some of that magic where it's like, okay, I don't care if you guys are going to have two 20-yard completions in the same drive. Once you are inside the 25-yard line, you are in our world now. And you cannot, cannot let them score more than, you know, realistically, I want to say two touchdowns, but I know that's not going to happen. So I'm going to say you can't let the Patriots score more than three touchdowns. Right. I think that it's, it's probably naive to expect them to score less, but I think a big key is, you know, are you going to be able to hold them under 30 with a couple field goals, or is this game going to sniff 40 because you can't keep them out of the end zone? Right. I think that's a huge... Huge factor. I mean, I think, think about it, big picture like that may hurt a little bit. You might have to take this on a drive-by-drive -drive basis. We yeah. stopped on this drive, cool, win. Go get your rest, let the offense do its thing. When we get back on the field, it's about stopping them again. And we talked about it being a Super Bowl rematch, but it can't be it a Super Bowl rematch. It can't be a Super Bowl rematch. You will not beat Tom Brady in a shootout again. You won't hang 41 points on him. Yeah. And if you do, he's probably going to hang 45 on you. Like, you're not going to be able to go tit for tat with Tom Brady like that. So you have to, one, do what you did. Do what you talked about. Stop them and hold them to field goals. Or stop them by default by not letting him get the ball. If he doesn't have the ball as many times, like I'm going to harp on it. If he doesn't have the ball as much as he's used to having the ball, Tom Brady can't score as much. You have to just keep the ball out of his hands. Deflate the game. Utilize the fact that you're at home. So if you have the ball a lot, it's not like fans are going to get restless. It's not like it's going to seem boring. The Eagles fans are going to like that you have the ball still. Utilize all that to your advantage and just keep play keep away with Tom Brady. That's what you got to do. Agreed. Right. Right. One right. more thing before we move on. I think going back to the, the point about sustaining drives, I think a guy that – uh, maybe this is just you know me being hopeful and an Eagles fan and all that, but I think a guy that actually will step up this week is Alshon. That group has been wishful. Uh, that wishful group has been under a lot of fire. That wishful group has been under a lot of fire. Maybe the extra week to rest up is what he needs. There's been you know there's no really hiding the fact that he is. You know, it looks like he is old. He is old. He is old. A lot of Tom Brady's old, but he's still performing at a high level. One's a wide receiver. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, a lot of Larry Fitzgerald, older than Alshon Jeffrey. Don't do a man Larry still like that. Still performing at a high level. Don't do a man age Larry like that. Age is only a number, my friend. So I'm saying this. Alshon Jeffrey needs to be the guy this week because somebody is going to need to step up at some point and get you a couple long, you know, third, eight-plus conversions. Someone is going to need to. And if Bill Belichick does what he's done since he's become a head coach, he's going to take away the Eagles' best offensive weapon, which is Zach Ertz, right? Mm -hmm. So after Ertz, it's like, who is your second most reliable pass catcher? Usually, it has to be Alshon. It has to not be a debate if it's Goddard or Alshon or you're praying for Miles Sanders to bust the big, big week for big Dallas game. Goddard. Hopefully. That's what, I could, that's what I think could happen. If they're going to take away Zach Ertz, we've already talked about the Eagles being one of the only NFL teams that can run that two tight end set very effectively. Which then helps out the run game. So it ha helps out the run game. And we know that very athletic tight ends such as Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard present matchup nightmares everywhere. everywhere. Can't stick a linebacker on him too, too slow. Can't stick a safety on him too small. Let Dallas Goddard eat too. Exactly. I agree with you. Someone's going to have to make a play. I don't know if it's going to be Alshon. I don't I'm know just if saying, you should, if you should I'm just saying, this, this has the making of the game where he comes live. It is a big game. It's a big opponent. It's at home after the bye week. Okay. You tell us. This. You tell us who you think 
is going to be the difference maker in this rematch okay. that cannot play it. out the same way as though. Super Bowl 52. <laughs> but we highlighted some of the possible struggles of the Eagles. Now we're going to walk across those friendly parking lots mm -hmm. yes. and talk about some of the struggles that are real inside the Wells Fargo Center. Real. So tell me. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong because none of these struggles were inside the we'll Wells get Fargo to it. Center. That's we'll true. get to it. You are right, though. They I were on right. a road trip. I West, hey, West Coast wasn't. road trips are tough. But let me pose you the question, who or what is causing the Sixers struggles this season? Um, honestly, I think, obviously, going, going out West is never easy for any no. East Coast team. And no. vice versa, right? West Coast teams going on, on, on Eastern trips. But that's you should expect to beat the Suns. You I, see, I actually disagree. That was the game I was most prepared to lose out of the three of them. No, we're the last undefeated team in, in the league. Every good thing comes to an end, right? The Suns are, are I'm not going to say they're sneaky good yet because teams haven't even played 10 games. The Sixers have never been able to handle Devin Booker. Exactly. That's literally, what does this say? That's De yep, Booker. It says Suns Booker. Booker. Devin Booker does what every great guard does to us, and he dropped 40, and that's the Sixers' Achilles heel. Because wow, I wonder who at the beginning of the season said defensive guard play was still going to be a struggle for the Sixers. It still is. What, what genius said that? It might have been you. you. I'll let you continue. We'll have, to, we'll have to check the tape. I'll check tape. It might have been you. I'll check tape. Look, the Suns game, you're coming in there hot, you're feeling good, you're going across the, you know, you're going across the country against a team that's feeling themselves as well. I have no, literally no issues with the Suns games. They did everything they could other than letting Devin Booker, you know, just have his routine 40. Other than that, I don't really have major problems with that game. The Utah game, I think, you know, I don't like chalking it up to Ben Simmons' injury, but he, he left in the game late second quarter. Sixers put up 17 third quarter points. 17 third quarter points. Third quarter That's comes a, back to haunt you. Exactly. Again. And I think, I think it'd be naive to say that the loss of Ben Simmons, a guy who they're not used to playing without. Say what you want about Embiid being out regularly. The Sixers are used to playing with Joel Embiid. They have a, they have a plan know, for it. They have a plan I don't know if, right. if Simmons has ever missed consecutive games. Uh, that I might be wrong. That's an off the top of the header. But I can tell you he's never missed three games in a row. Yeah. He's might have missed one or two. He's had his knocks here and there. Right. It's but he's, he, they've never had to really plan to deal without him because he's always available. Right. So I think that is really the main catalyst for that game. Utah's a good team. Not a huge problem losing to them on the road, but I think the biggest issue there is the Sixers. Now the Denver game. No, the U, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop yeah. you. The Utah game should be a problem because you had a decent lead. If you have a decent okay. lead, I get that Ben Simmons went out, but you pride yourself on being I so good. I think the good. Denver lead's even worse. Well, the it's Denver lead, yeah. But if you pride a team that prides himself on being so good and such a juggernaut defensively as the Sixers want to hang their hat on this year, if you have a big lead like that, I get that Ben Simmons is out, but you still have great defensive players and there should be able to hold I agree. Them. We had a lead at halftime, and then we got outscored by 13 in the third quarter. Yeah. And we actually, we actually, won the fourth quarter by two points, right. there, but still lose by the two because of done. how yeah. bad the third quarter is. Mm -hmm. And then last thing, the Denver game is mad. That's bad. It's mad. That's bad. bad. My, only, my only consolation is that Denver was the best home team in the league last year, and that's really what I'm hanging on to as like, hey, it's not that bad of a loss. But blowing a 21 fourth quarter lead, 21 point, not a half, not a game, blowing a 21 point lead at any point in the game, bad. Second half, even worse. Fourth quarter is a that's a meltdown. That is a textbook meltdown. So why are you yeah. saying you're making excuses? For I'm not. It? I'm pissed about this Denver well, game. That's what I'm I saying. am not making excuses about this Denver. That is inexcusable. The, I say what you want about Embiid not getting fouled at the end of the game when the NBA admits that it's a foul and all that. Yeah, and I, you say what you want, but that happens in every game, every sport. That's two of every the twenty. That's two of the twenty-one. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's two of the twenty-one. Exactly. And, and, and Embiid looked gassed already. Exactly. Embiid looked exhausted. Say what you even want. Even had three games off say, this year already. Say what you want about the high altitude, which I get. But you supposed to drop 25 pounds and look all cut and, and talking about you this found condition? It in Denver. Found it in Denver. Here's, here's, my, here's why I think what is causing the Sixers struggles, what is holding me back. The things that we everyone was harping on last year don't seem to be changing. Uh, Joel Embiid's health and conditioning. Ben Simmons' lack of a jump shot. I know it's played out. I know we've talked about it's it. Fair. And, and, it's, and, and also, it's fair. It's, it's played out. But, and I was going to give, I think, all of Sixers, all the Sixers fandom was kind of got – you know, give him a grace period. Yeah. We're not going to get on you inside the first 10 or 15 games. We'll give you a chance to showcase what you got. He has yet to showcase it. I'm cool with seeing shots in a wide open gym with nobody on you draining threes. Cool. We've seen that before. You're going to need to start taking these in game routine if you really want to work on it, if you really want to take yourself mm -hmm. to that next level. And I'm a guy who may not be a Sixers fan, but I want to see Ben Simmons succeed. I think he's one of the best talents to come out in a long time. And I think yeah. if he wants to take himself from a perennial all-star, a really good player, someone who's going to be remembered by Sixers history, to someone who's going to be remembered by NBA history, I think he's going to have to start working on that to really control the we perimeter. Well and then we the agree. last and then the last thing I know where this is going. Is Tobias Harris. Yep. 
you do not pay someone $150 million to let things come to them. You don't. You don't pay someone that much money to not go get theirs. It's long enough, Tobias. You've sat in that corner for long enough. You need to come get the ball, take it out of somebody's hands, assert yourself either in the game, in the locker room, or in a timeout, and say, I need the ball, I'm going to get my shot, and then when you say it, go get it. And I have a fear that he's not going to do that because maybe he's a little uh, – insecure about his game, maybe not confident in his game of being able to go get that shot anymore since he hasn't really been the man in the last year and a half. But if I'm going to pay you a bag like I'm paying Tobias the Harris, bag. the bag of the offseason, I need you to start being, if not the, the second or third best option on this offense, night in and night out. It needs to happen. If he's not, the Sixers are going to spin their wheels and be in the same spot that they were the past two years. And this is where it is. We can't have the guys who were relying on being our outside shot, Tobias Harris and Josh Richardson, both shooting below 35 percent. But there from was a three. problem when you relied on them being your three-point shooters. The Sixers, I don't disagree the with Sixers you. Sixers have a bunch of players who can shoot threes, not three-point shooters. There's a difference. There is. There's very, huge, very well said. There's a huge difference well in that, said. and I think you guys put all your eggs in baskets of guys who can shoot threes who are not knocked down three-point shooters. You don't have one. Burkan Korkmaz, three-point shooter. Oh, is Burkan oh, Korkmaz the best player in the NBA? You tell us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we laid out a little bit of a blueprint to right the ship in, all, in, in on so many uncertain words for the Sixers. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to lay out a blueprint to actually pull the Titanic out of the water, <laughs> patch the holes, and get it floating again for our Philadelphia Phillies. Joe Girardi can't do that. Last year. Yeah, Joe, Joe Girardi can't five, do that. Five hundred with Bryce Harper. No, we're not Harper. trying to fix the Knicks here. First of all, first of all, ouch. Five hundred is a huge disappointment. It is a huge, huge disappointment. And, and I was, I was a huge. Gonna, I was a there's huge a bunch of holes in it, but it's on land at this point. Yeah, it's just the on Nationals, who people predicted to finish fourth well, we in the, the East, in, in, so <laughs> won the World <laughs> Series. This is bad. We are not even taking on water. We, I, do, we, I feel like we, we are overhydrated. We have so much water. I feel like we wouldn't have felt as bad about the Philly season if the Nationals didn't win the World Series. You were completely the right. The Nationals 100%. winning the World Series 100%. made all of this work. I, I, I had to sit back on Twitter and watch Bryce Harper memes that I could do nothing about. I couldn't yeah. defend it. And you so, know he's upset. And you That's know he's upset. It right. haunts me. I can, it haunts I can, me. I can sit here and say, oh, he's not upset. He got... He's, he's upset. upset. I mean, you, should upset. Be. you should I, be upset. You should be upset. You should be damn upset if you leave a team and they, Look, they win the, sh the title. The I year get after. it. You got $330 million. I get you have a whole lot of money. The only way, but the only the way team, you forget this. But the it's team good. that you curved went and won a World Series pretty much in spite of you, that hurts. I, you, I don't know if it's in spite of because that pitching that that pitching staff is yeah. outrageous. But look, at, but look at who's replacing him. Juan Soto. Juan Goto? <laughs> look. That hurts, but it's not. Yeah, a no, I don't want to say it, but it's the truth. We stopped talking about the You're right. You're right. I'm like sitting here sulking. I blueprint. I'm done with this. Blue, uh, blueprint. I think blueprint is the is. You talking about writing the ship? Yeah, don't, yeah. Don't get me make, back on course. Get me in the playoffs. Get me deep. Okay. Don't make the same mistake you made last year. Not going and getting starting pitcher pitching either in the off season or at the deadline. If you want to commit to it, the best option out there for starting pitching is becoming a free agent. Who? thank you to the Astros, was left in mint condition because they didn't want to use him too much in the World Series to leave him best of free agency. Don't know why you do that, but hey, it works out for the Phillies because now he's not hurt and not, it doesn't have a bunch of mileage on him from the postseason. All in on Garrett Cole. All in. Spend, spend all why of it. Why not? No if, cap. If, if, no cap. Like if, if, he wants, if he wants legit all the money in the world plus the whole Tasty Cake factory, you give it to him. They're pretty good. You give it to him. Yeah. That, a Tasty Cake. Let's that, talk. And I heard a little bit of rumors of Josh Donaldson being out there too. I think we could get him at a little price. You might be shaking your head, but Give me did, but did, that 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 is a bag. That is a yeah. bag. That Take all the money ever <laughs> and spend it. I get I it. Say this. I get all it. of it. But what if what if a similar situation happens where the Phillies run into bad production and a lot of injuries and you want to make a move at the deadline? That's how you retool the farm system. But the, now you don't have. The farm let system. me say. Let me say this. That's let how you retool it. The farm system. That's how you retool it. We're if not everything in a blows farm up, you blow mode. it up. We're not in a farm system mode. You're not. And wrong. retooling is also easier because you need to depend on your scouting department and everything. I will say this: that when it comes to the third base debate, which has probably been outside of the mound, is probably the most widely talked about area on the Phillies roster at least Agreed. for last year. Donaldson, I like Donaldson. Wouldn't be mad if we got Donaldson, but he signed a twenty-four million dollar a year deal with the Braves last year. That's probably not going to be that high, but hell, we'll call it $20 million. 
That's a lot. What's the difference? Exactly. What's the difference between getting Donaldson for one year, twenty million, or throwing the extra couple million a year at Rendon and just saying, extra couple? You see his, you 20, see his playoffs. Twenty four a year. Yeah. Well, he's not. You're not going to give him Harper money. You're not. I mean, Bryce Harper's only getting twenty four a year. That's true. Yeah. He's, he's, 30, he's 30, 30, 13 30, years, 30, though. That's true. That's why. I mean, I was even putting Harper just you know the rough math. You know, 30, 330. 11 years, 33 million years. But obviously, that doesn't work out that same way. But hell, even if you're paying Rendon, what, 26, 27 million a year? Like, but that, that, extra, that extra six or seven mil could maybe get you somebody. It could, but that's the price you pay up. for locking up a guy with that skill set for a long period of time and not just hoping that th next year isn't the year that 35-year-old Josh Donaldson falls off the cliff production-wise. That's true. I think, I think that's personally worth it. Pitching, Garrett Cole, I don't think I need to say anything else more about that. Give me a Cole Hamels reunion. Thank you. Yeah, one, yeah. Year, one year cheap rental. He wants to. He's already exactly. said, He's already said, said I want to come that, back if they'll have me. That's All right. So that's we have your house on two him. of the three Stooges left in that front front office. I want both of you to put your heads together and figure out how to bring Cole Hamels back. And I also yeah. didn't mention that the Phillies offseason started off on a great foot because they extended the best catcher in baseball, JT. Yes, they sir. are about to. They are, he is not opposed to an extension. Uh, I thought they... He is not opposed okay. to. Same thing. It's going to get, get, it's gonna get done. Gold if it's glove, not, I'm coming for winner, it. Gold winner, JT yes. Realmoots. I know where your offices are. Absolutely. <laughs> um, wow. All right. So... <laughs> We're going to go back. We just fixed that easily, didn't Yes, we? you're right. Uh, yeah, I have a couple moves. Baseball's easy. Yes. Simple money. Spend all the money ever. Don't worry <laughs> about it. what it is. Take it's the what money. It is. Just do it. Play in a big market. <laughs> spend all your money. Don't care about it. You don't need it. Um, sure. So we're going to go back across the parking lot to the Wells Fargo. And our own Mr. Five Digits, yes. Max Coolish, is going to give you Minute with Max to talk about the Fly Guys. Ed educate me on the Flyers, Max. Please, listen up. And Goal Farabee. Goal Farabee, great shout. So we got a lot of hockey things going on here, right? So as I'm sure a lot of you people don't know because it's just somehow widely accepted that apparently nobody watches the Flyers, even though they have pretty good attendance all the time. All so the time. if you're unfamiliar, the Flyers are point getters in five straight. And for those of you unfamiliar with hockey, you can still get points for your standings, even if you lose in a shootout. That's kind of confusing. I get it. Thank Fair you. enough. Thank you. So the Flyers currently sit fourth place in their conference. Right? Yep. 22 points. Points total are too hard to keep track of, so you can figure out the record on your own. Currently sitting fourth in their conference. In their last five games, three of those four teams have been playoff teams. Two of those wins were on the road. Two of those wins were shootouts. And I'm just going to say this. Flyers fan or not, I know you've heard about Carter Hart by now, 7-9. That guy is a monster. Looking at his box score in Boston last night, he only made 24 saves. If you go back and watch Carter Hart's highlights from the third period and on. Stud. Absolute monster. I don't care if you don't like hockey, if you've never seen snow or ice or <laughs> felt a temperature below 50 degrees in your life. You go, watch, you go watch those highlights and you can tell that what that guy is doing is special. He is on another level and he is, to use Game of Thrones terms, he is the prince that was promised. We have been waiting for a goaltender to bring us home for so goddamn long and he is here. Please check out the Flyers. I would tell you to watch Wednesday when they play the Capitals, but the Capitals are the best team in the NHL and it's in Washington. So don't watch that game because they might get the kicked out of them. <laughs> so I'm not going to recommend that game. But the next game after that, watch the next it. game after that, watch that game. I don't know who it is, Carter but watch Big the next game after that. Carter Big Heart. Carter Hart Carter with Big the Heart. Big Heart. Look at that. You guys learned something yes. while also getting to hear Mr. Max Coolish break down our flyers. Yes. That's awesome. So now we're going to move into halftime. And as always, guys, our halftime here at Trust the Process Live is brought to us by Hit em High, also on My New Philly. It is uh, probably something that I'm most proud of, you know what I mean? It's, every Monday we get to go up to Parks Casino um, and we get to hear Seth Joyner, really, I'm not even talking just talk football, football literally break everything down. Uh, whiteboard work every week, the man, what he can still do, his mind is still so acute on football. One, he could probably coach better than most defensive coordinators out there, <laughs> but two, he could probably still outbench most of the linebackers oh, on the oh, Eagles. Yeah. My man, boy. I'm telling you, he almost ripped my arm off. <laughs> just shaking it. I, I almost gave, don't I have gave an him arm. a handshake. No, it's, uh, he doesn't know a casual handshake. It's ridiculous. And if he does, that was a, a 
poor attempt at a casual handshake. It's I'm gonna say. wild. But it's like one of those cartoons, your fingers all like this. Yes, it's, 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 yeah, three times exactly. Shame on you for trying to casually handshake Seth. Seth right, 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 right. right. Like, hey, Seth, no, you got to come in chest yeah, puffed like, out, and you got to. I did a game with a nice firm one. Like <laughs> my nice firm handshake and a former NFL player's nice firm right. handshake. That's all right. I'm going to say. All I'm going to say. Uh, but hit them high. Brought to you by My New Philly every Monday, except for this past Monday, because the Eagles got the buy. We also needed a buy. Don't, don't. Don't get on us. We needed it. Mm-hmm. Trust us. Uh, every, every every Monday at noon on My New Philly backslash or Facebook backslash My New Philly. Where's so, Philly gambling? Go to Parks. Yes. Catch sure. Live. Catch live Maybe. Show. Parks. Let's talk. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> getting into the second half of the show, we are going to do offensive boards, but with a fun twist. Yes, a little fun twist. And uh, we are going to ask you, the viewer, as we go along and do our NFL superlatives, to oh, also give us your NFL superlatives. So I think you're going to like this. So, first one. Don't look. Mr. League winner, who is going to win you or your team, your fantasy league or otherwise? This is good. Who's done first? I'm done first. first. Oh! Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you wrote the full name. I only did a first name. There we go. All right, that's right. Mine is Mr. Chris Godwin. That's right. But the second receiver on my Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I feel like when the fantasy league started, there were a lot of people who kind of shied away from him because of how much hype he was getting. People were thinking he couldn't possibly live up to all this hype. No way. He's got Mike Evans on his team. He's got O.J. Howard on his team. There's James Winston on his team. <laughs> no way he could put up all these numbers. My man is showing up and showing out. If you passed on him, you're feeling the hurt. All right, so I'm choosing this guy, Darren Waller, mostly because of the position he plays and for the story. So as I'm sure everyone at least knows who this guy is by now, but you might not know his story, this is not – Fabrication, this is not me exaggerating. John Gruden and the Raiders had a joint practice or a preseason game against the Ravens. Darren Waller was a practice squatter for the Ravens. Yep. He wasn't even above Mark Andrews or Hayden Hurst. He was a practice squatter for the Ravens. John Gruden saw this guy in shorts and pads and said, that guy is so good, he's better than any tight end I have on my roster. <laughs> and guess what? John Gruden was right. Currently, Waller sits second in fantasy for tight ends. Maybe that fluctuates depending on how your league scores. But in general, he's no worse than a top three tight end, mostly for a guy who didn't even get picked in some league. No. I know personally the league that he I have in both both leagues I have him in, he was a post-draft waiver wire addition, first thing that Takes I did. Picks him up off waivers. So I think if I didn't have Travis t- Kelsey, I probably would have picked him up. I have, I have Waller and Kelsey in one league, and I'm sitting yeah, there. That's a nice flex. That's a nice flex. It is. You're greedy. And honestly, I in terms of <laughs> positional value, tight end is feels like it's thin as ever. Yeah. Darren Waller is probably getting it you wins. It was very thin this year. Very thin. thin, very very thin. thin. Well, I'm going to go Dalvin Cook, and I don't think I need to rationalize that for anybody. Um, so I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> oh, so look at me rationalizing. Our, uh, our, have a good running back oh, get out of here. Best one two punch in the NFL, Minnesota Vikings. Okay. So, our next one. Shit. Don't, oh, uh, all right. My bad. I thought you were looking at me crazy. Oh, no, no, no. I'm waiting for uh, it. I'm waiting uh, ready to go. Our second one's going to be Mr. Roller Coaster. Who is the most inconsistent and up and down player like a roller coaster? Ooh. And don't forget, uh, the, the viewer out there, I want you to tell me who your. Mr. League winner and Mr. Roller Coaster are. I think I get I get points. I get That's, points. I like this. I get points Smirk for for my illustration here. Uh, Mr. Matt Ryan. And I'm not just talking about fantasy because I do have him on my fantasy team too, but also uh, put it in front of my face. But huh. also just watch him on a week in and week out basis. Now I know he wasn't the biggest reason the Falcons won and beat the Saints yesterday, but Matt Ryan looked better than he looked majority of the weeks prior and I really struggle to figure out why he can't play like that in a week in and week out basis you have the best receiver in football just throw him the ball like just throw it to him just throw it to him okay one of the best receivers in football there we go throw him throw him the ball I think Matt Ryan can be much more consistent he's up and down and it's hurting the problem yes all right I'm gonna pick a guy that is very near and dear to my heart oh Philip Rivers I love me some Phil Phil Rivers Rivers. all that I just I just want to see Philip Rivers succeed and it just feels like I've been watching the Chargers lose important games forever. But it's not. I think they don't lose. Phil it, Rivers doesn't lose but not always, important games. Well, but the open all, game, he, yeah, the he open was game trash was in that game. He was trash. That's the thing with Phil Rivers. He does good enough to win most weeks where guys like us were like, Phil Rivers, short end of the stick, he deserves better. The Chargers think their coach blows it, whatever you want to say. But then – Phil Rivers does what he does on Oakland with a great chance to tie the game. With the whole nation watching. With the whole nation watching. 
He, he could have thrown o, seven picks. He went 0 for 7 with an interception on their final drive. He went 0 for 3, defensive holding on fourth down, incomplete, 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 interception in the game. I love Philip Rivers, but that is him in a nutshell. All six of their losses have been one possession games. Philip Rivers has the most one possession losses, one, most one score losses. It's crushing. Probably crushing. in NFL history. Yeah, absolutely I've crushing. Yeah. I've got to say yeah. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going middle finger. Too bougie to middle finger. I'm smudging. So those are our Mr. Roller Coasters. This one, I think, is a little uh, near and dear to the Philadelphia fans' hearts. So who is your Mr. Double Doink? Who is this <laughs> season's Cody go Parkey? Woo! Go ahead. Good save, Carter Hart. If he hasn't already blown his team this season, Freddie Kitchens is making a absolute joke yeah, of is. the Browns hype train. Look, I so was, was Baker though. I was kind of in on the on the Browns hype train originally. They obviously have a very talented roster offensively, at least. Freddie looked like the guy last year. Their play calling has been like atrocious, insanely. Like, like I'm being serious. You could like Mick, like Mickey, defensive line coach. I'm pretty sure Mickey could put together a better offensive script for that team because they don't use Odell Beckham as as a deep down the field weapon. Jarvis Landry seems to be the only person who actually has the role to find where he gets eight catches for you know anywhere from 40 to 120 yards, depending on how successful their plays are. Mm. Chubb has been running the ball well. They, the the Browns ran eight plays. From inside the Bills, too, at one point this past game. Zero and they came away with zero points. And if that is not a guy points. costing his team the season, Baker Mayfield is not the one calling those plays. Mm -hmm. You can do That's you true. can do almost anything from the one and score touchdown. I, I think it's funny. You're right about the Odell Beckham point, but then they did force feed him the ball. Uh, voice him the ball yesterday, but it even still looked like a uh, fine here. Since since you want the ball so bad here, the road road him and Jarvis that, were twelve yard out. Yeah. That, Both of them. That Patriots play. game, they ran a draw on fourth and nine. <laughs> what? Who, mine's, who is yours? Mine's another coach, um, a coach who has no six. Freddie Kitchens at least had success as an offensive coordinator. This guy has had no success anywhere. I don't even know if I'm spelling his last name right. Mr. Adam Gase you of, put an H in there? of New York Jets. How do you spell his A name? case for Gase. H for Gase, whatever. <laughs> Adam Gase, wow. I don't even care enough yes. to how to spell your last name, but I know that you're a very bad football coach and the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. The Jets have talent on their football team. Yeah. You look across, but you have one of the best safeties in the NFL in, in Jamal Adams. <laughs> the, yeah, the Browns too. Talent. <laughs> they have one of the best safeties in football in Jamal Adams. I think Sam Darnold can be a really good quarterback in this league. Have one of the best playmakers in Le'Veon Bell. Have, I think, a formidable and, and serviceable receiving core. Put it bottom line is there's wins to be had with this football team. And you have a coach who can't coach direction. That's what Adam Gase is. Can't. Bring together a football good team. Football guy, Thank you. Good football guy. <laughs> can't can't bring them that can't bring them together. So that that's what I see in Adam Gase. So we're talking about guys who can't bring them together. Our mm -hmm. next award is going to go to the guys that can. So guys, tell me who is your most likely to go down with the ship? Sticking with the Jets, Sam Darnold, baby. For those of you unaware, it's interesting. Sam Darnold, he's not wrong. I'm, I will preface this: he is not wrong. But Sam Darnold, in his press conference yesterday, two and seven Jets, they're getting hot. He said, we can still make the playoffs. And he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. Guess Just got to run the table. All you got to do is win seven straight, win over the Patriots, beat the Dolphins a couple times, really get yourself out of the cellar. Next thing you know, the Jets are six, six and ten, and they're picking 12. The Dolphins with the same record. And the Dolphins will somehow have the same record after beating the Jets in their next game. That's so, crazy. Uh, Sam Darnold, major props to you. I'm not doing this to hate because you did everything right. You can still technically make the playoffs. I know I'd be pissed if... The Eagles were two and seven, and Carson Wentz was like, "This season, shot, put a fork in us, bet against right, us." As every a quarterback, week. he said what he had to say. Else. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So I will give you props for that, Sam Darnold. But you are going down with the shit, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I almost said his teammate Le'Veon Bell because we Le'Veon Bell could have packed it in this season a long time ago. I've only heard good things yes. about Le'Veon, and, and I watch him it, and watch him in the eye test. He goes out and plays every snap his hardest. I respect yeah. that in Le'Veon Sir. Bell. But I'm going to go with a guy who has had success in his career, but recently it hasn't looked so good, but he hasn't let that waver his leadership. And that's Mr. Larry Legend, Mr. Larry Ooh, Fitzgerald okay. over there with the Arizona Cardinals. Has to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Larry. There's no, conclu or there's no um, you know, reservation about that. Uh, Jerry Rice himself said this probably the best hands he's ever seen ever. in the NFL. And for the past three or four years, the Cardinals have looked, say it with me, Shaky baby. baby, but you wouldn't you would be able to tell looking at Louis Fitzgerald has been a great mentor to all of his young receivers Especially Kyler and especially Kyler Murray this past year I love what Louis Fitzgerald is doing when all else fails Louis Fitzgerald will go out there put his helmet on and try to play his hardest 
He's allergic for that. Good, good. Right. So, I'll go first. I already have mine. Well, right you now. you might see the graphic on the screen and be like, oh, why is there a picture of a flak jacket? So, <laughs> our Mister Flak Jacket is the guy who is most likely to take the hits for the team and really step up he's when they say, need it the most. I, I mean, Dude, are you <laughs> who is, is the really most likely really <laughs> to play injured on their team? Carson Wentz. That's not. That's of true. Of course, it's Carson Wentz. If he goes hurt and the Eagles go down, we're not winning a game the rest of the season. So Carson Wentz literally. He, he probably he has played with a flat it's jacket before. Of, it's true. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's bad. I'm, I'm gonna just guess it. I'm gonna, I, I don't do it. it. I'm gonna <laughs> do it. I did it on accident, Max. Go ahead. Carson Wentz, if he goes down, every wheel falls off at the same time. He has shown the propensity to play hurt before. He doesn't care what it is. He will play through anything that he is physically capable of playing through. And I he is he's at the point where he knows that that offense isn't doing anything without him. If he goes down, season over instantly. So you realize that's not good, right? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not good. We, I can't tell you who's most James, likely to play injured and that James, be a good thing. James, we've said it's not a good thing. He knows it's not a good no, thing. No, Carson, get, Carson saying gets it's not it a, a good lot. Thing. And, you know, it's, but look, he's statistically no more likely to get injured than anyone else because that's how math works. But sure. if he gets hurt, he's playing through a bar, a major – like, unless he can't physically stand, right. he'll, he would play with a broken left arm on top. And he that. almost couldn't physically stand. Look, you're right, and I got all the respect for the dude. He scored a touchdown on a torn ACL. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about him right now. Uh, before Max gets to ruin mine, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say Matthew Stafford. It's Matthew Stafford. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just like Carson Wentz, this man will go out in shambles of himself if it means he can win his team a football game. I watched Matthew Stafford go a whole drive with a dis literally playing like this with a dislocated shoulder and threw a touchdown pass at the end of it, told his medical staff, I'm going back into the game. I'm playing. Taking this I'm, I'm taking this. I'm taking this snap. We can do what we want afterwards. He did have to sit this past week with a real phantom injury at the very last second, and I knew that probably killed him because I've watched Matt Stafford play through so many injuries, and you got to respect a guy who will go out like that. He's one of the toughest dudes in football. I, I was just going to say, he's probably the toughest QB in the league. Yeah, that, like... I'd say so with the yeah, yeah I'd, with I'd the retirements of other quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Stafford is that. he's always out there, he's yeah. always putting up stats. I mean look, his shoulder was literally his shoulders were yeah. Yeah. on a slant. It I watched that, that feels like that's not the first time that no. no, and it won't be the last time exactly. I'm, I'm willing not. to bet. So that was our offensive boards and our NFL superlatives. So going, going the right viewers at home, don't forget to tell us who your superlatives are. For this NFL season, you're Mr. League winner, you're Mr. Roller Coaster, you're most likely to double doink, you're most likely to go down with the ship because we know there's a bunch of ships sinking out there. I like this. Like the illustration. <laughs> and are most likely to play injured, Mr. Flak Jacket. So. There's really no H in Adam Gase. I spelled that wrong. No, no yeah, it's, it's just it's it's, yeah, yeah, it's just, like any other word that yeah. rhymes with Ace. Just says just, just, okay. Just, 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 okay. Just, just, no, just, hey, <laughs> We're gonna, move on, to yeah, gonna, gonna, gonna move on to tap outs, guys. We're gonna move on to tap outs. You wanna go first? Let me go first. Let's okay, go. sure. Um, so yesterday, I made the mistake that many Americans have made, uh, you know, this year or at least in the past recent months. I went to Popeyes to get myself a sandwich. Never, oh, never, no, had, no. never had the Popeyes sandwich before. My sister was like, "I want to go to Popeyes to get it so bad." I said, "Fine." You know what? The games, one o'clock games, aren't really grabbing my attention. Come on, sis, let's go get a Popeye's sandwich. We go to Popeye's. And, of course, in big, bold letters, when we get up in Popeye's, we are sold out of chicken sandwiches. Tough. Popeye's will never be Chick-fil-A for that reason wow. alone. If you have a commodity such as the chicken sandwich, you know that people are going to come. I don't care if you run out. Make more. I know you have ingredients in the back. <laughs> Whip up some more. Chick-fil-A would never. I dare you to go to Chick-fil-A and they say, we sold out of chicken sandwiches. And then to be rude as the Popeye's employees <laughs> are, and be like, no, we don't got no more. We're not going to have no more the rest of the day. Well, go make more. Like, that's, you know why I'm here. Like, you know why I pulled up at Popeye's. Not for the three-piece spicy tender, although Ooh, it was kind of good. Their biscuits are good. I wanted that chicken sandwich. Chick-fil-A would have never put me out in the cold like that. So I don't even have to have the sandwich. I'm going to say right now, Chick-fil-A is better for that reason alone. Uh, my tap out is significantly quicker. Um, I will, and I actually tried the, I didn't get the, the chicken Popeye's sandwich the first go around. I got it last Friday after a, a night out, and maybe it was just because of my, my mental status. But is, is there supposed to be like a, um, like a sauce or a condiment on there? Because mine didn't have it's it. It's mayo. I heard it's just, I heard like it's just mayo. I didn't, I didn't even like have that. I, th I, th I thought it was supposed to be like Chick-fil-A would never. Anyway, anyway, my tap out is pretty straightforward <laughs> and simple. 
<laughs> we got a raise at work. We're yes. Happy. Congratulations. Yes. So. Five digits indeed. That's yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, mine is going to be about this mop you see on my head. I have been trying to get a haircut for two weeks. Mm. That involves calling to schedule. That involves showing up to schedule in person. No walk-ins? They don't take walk-ins at your shop? Apparently not. I don't <laughs> That's If you do, you gotta tell me. Uh, right. But I walk in, and some dude's sitting in my chair. Oh. At that time, not even like he's finishing up the cut. Fwap. <laughs> Gets it put around his neck. Mm -hmm. Looking at you, huh? Like you got your spot. Hey, this dude just walked in. He, he about to get a cut. Is that your man? Wow. Did I not have a time? Did you not call me with said time? I'm not, a, I could do this forever. That's like, getting, that's like getting cheated on. That's, that's like getting cheated on. That's tough. We'll come back to that. But <laughs> I just need a haircut. So if you've got a barber that uh, is a little bit better, better with scheduling, drop that in the comments because I could use one. So. <laughs> thank nice you. Yes, that. yes, it is. So, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Trust the Process Live brought to you by My New Philly, where something's always new and everything's always Philly. Who is this dude? Who is this dude? Yo, Keith Bob 85 Slam. <laughs> this shit is really hard. This is the now that's what I call music version. Get your roll on. Wow. I have an old girl and I know she doesn't like slow songs. Doesn't like slow songs. She's not a fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, this, is this is definitely a version you'll put to YouTube. Oh, Aubrey. Gotta hit the club like you hit the